If you want to start homesteading, I have some bad news for you. In the near future, it's going to get a lot harder for you to start. We're going to talk about why, but we're also going to talk about what you can do so that this homestead dream of yours becomes a reality. We started homesteading 15 years ago, and it wasn't easy back then. I faced three big challenges when I started my homesteading journey. The first one, I was new at this lifestyle and I didn't really have any support system. So there was nobody who was ready to take me under their wing and show me how to butcher a chicken or castrate a pig, all things that you may need to know if you are starting a homestead life. And I kind of had to teach myself. So the lack of support that we had, that was a challenge. YouTube wasn't the plethora of homesteading knowledge that it is today. You couldn't just go on and find a video about how to butcher chickens 15 years ago. There was some stuff out there, but it wasn't what it was today. Uh, so that was definitely a big challenge for me, but it wasn't by far the biggest challenge. Another problem that we came across very often was starting homesteading was cost prohibitive. We were a young couple with a little baby and not a whole lot of money. We wanted to have some land and start a little farm. Land was hard to find, and when you found it, it was expensive, it was costly. So we started looking for places, uh, but time and time again, we either couldn't afford it, farmland can be extremely expensive, and the cheaper land that you wind up find, finding is usually not great land for homesteading or farming, at least not at first. You have to kind of convert it. So that was a big challenge. At one point, we talked to my parents who had a couple of acres and they said, why don't you guys start homesteading on the couple of acres that we have? They were just a bare couple of acres, two acres. And although it wasn't as big of a property as we wanted, we thought, you know what? It's two acres to get started, let's do it. We did a little bit of research and that's when we bumped up into problem number three, which was red tape. More and more and more red tape appears every single year. Back then, 15 years ago, at this particular town that we were looking to start a homestead in, two acres, it was illegal to have a single chicken on two acres, which seems crazy. I think it is crazy. If you have two acres of land, you should be able to have chickens. But the government of that town did not agree with me and they always win when it comes to uh, whether or not you have chickens and whether or not you're allowed to have chickens. So we were not able to start a homestead on that particular piece of property because of the red tape. Now that was 15 years ago. Eventually we found a way to get our homestead dream, the ball rolling and it grew, it snowballed to the point where we are today, where we are homesteading on a couple hundred acres of a family farm that we manage. Uh, we have access to lots of pastures. We've built up the infrastructure. We've had built up our herds of cows and sheep and goats. We have chickens, all kinds of livestock. We've experimented with a lot of different things. And so we've been able to grow our homestead despite the challenges that we had at the beginning. But here's the thing, over a 15 year period, what have we seen happen? The challenges that we faced in the beginning, those three major challenges, every single year, they get harder and harder. They get worse and worse. Let's break them down one by one because these are the challenges that you're gonna face if you wanna start homesteading. If you're new and you wanna start homesteading, you're gonna run into the same challenge that we ran into in the early days and that's trying to find support systems to help you get started. The good news is there's tons of YouTube videos that weren't there 15 years ago and there's lots of resources online that weren't there 15 years ago, however, Year after year after year, the support systems that are going to help you learn and run your homestead continue to go down and down. There's less and less people with this lifestyle. First off, farmers. The average age of a farmer continues to increase every year. And that's because there are less young farmers starting, more and more older farmers getting older, retiring, stopping. So the average age continues to rise of farmers. So you're less likely to know a farmer who is still farming and able to help you, teach you, kind of pass the baton onto you. It doesn't mean they're not out there. 
and there are small farms that are doing a lot of instruction and education, so look for those, but there are going to be less and less farmers. Now let's say you get things up and running on your homestead and now you're looking to, for example, you have some pigs that you've raised, you're looking to get them butchered. There are less and less butchers every single year. One article that we found talked about butcher trends for 2023. There was an annual growth of negative 1.4% of butcher shops. So every year there's less and less butchers, there's less and less butcher shops. Another article talked about how in the state of Iowa, there were 140 or fewer small meat processors compared to about 450 as far back as the 60s. So there's a trend here. There's less and less people out there who you can take your meat to and have it processed. What about if you wanna keep your animals alive, right? Uh, veterinary services. Unfortunately, there's the same trend in the world of veterinary services. Over time, we see less and less people who are large animal vets. Now you might find more and more vets popping up in your area who will help you with your dogs and cats. But the amount of vets who are out there who will help you with large animals, less and less and less. If you decide to start, you're not gonna be able to find a lot of people to help you. And the longer you wait, probably the less and less people out there who are gonna be help teach you things, help train you, help butcher your meat, take care of your animals, all those things, there's going to be less and less, which means there's gonna be a lot more responsibility on your shoulders. You're going to need to learn a lot more about how to help your animals with different veterinary practices. You might need to learn to draw blood, give shots. These are all things that over the years at our homestead, we've had to learn to do more and more because less and less are we able to get people out onto the farm to take a look at our animals. So we've had to do these things over the years. We've had to learn. I, I don't like giving shots to animals. I don't like drawing blood. I don't like working with needles, but these are all different skills that we've had to learn over time. We're fortunate we still once in a while can get a vet out to the farm for a big task, something important, but they're definitely not on demand. They're definitely not there every time you need them. There have been sometimes with big, big problems on the farm that we've called a few and they've said, sorry, we can't come out and help you and we've had to just do it ourselves. So that's the kind of thing. Same with butchering. We saw this happen big time with COVID. Lots of people started raising animals, but not thinking ahead the six months or the year or two years to saying, all right, eventually this animal is gonna be ready to be processed. Does, is there a place I can take this animal and process it for me? A lot of people had animals that suddenly they couldn't find a butcher because their pigs were full grown, they were ready to be butchered, but all the butchers were booked up all the small scale producers were overloading the small scale butchers and just nobody could find a place. Butchers were being booked up a year in advance, two years in advance. And again, that's because there's less and less butchers every year, less and less people to process this. You might have to drive a far distance. You might have to book far ahead. So these are the things that you're gonna have to be ready for if you're getting started on this path. Learning how to butcher yourself, learning how to do your own vet work and being a bit of a self-starter, not being afraid to go watch a few YouTube videos, maybe take a couple online classes. If you're fortunate enough to have a small farm or a small homestead in your area that does classes, pounce on those, learn what you can, because there's less and less people out there who are gonna be able to help you and teach you the longer you wait to start. Let's say you overcome that. You're like, you know what? I'm still gonna do it. I'm gonna start. Now it's time where you actually are looking for land. You're gonna run up into the same problem that I faced when I got started, the cost of homestead property being very cost prohibitive. Now this is one of those areas where you just wish you got started a long time ago. 10 years ago, the average price of an acre of farmland in my area was about $6,000. Now, here we are today, it's $8,620 on average for that same acre. So there's been a huge increase in the cost of farmland. Now think about your salary, what you earn. You know, if you were a kid, you know, just working at McDonald's and now you got a professional job, maybe your salary, maybe your revenue has increased. But the longer that you go 
not buying farmland and the longer the price continues to go up, you're going to find it harder and harder to find the land you're looking for and to harder and harder to be able to afford that land. The average family's income has gone up about 20% over the last decade. And if you're a farmer, your income has pretty much flatlined on average over the last decade. So the people looking at this style of life, looking for this land, we're not making a bunch more money every year and yet the cost of land continues to rise, it continues to go up. So what's the point here? Again, it's you don't wanna wait to get started because this is getting harder and harder and it's only going to continue to get harder and harder. This trend is a trend that hasn't stopped on average over the last really 100 years, these trends continue. So it's only gonna get more expensive and it's only gonna get harder to find the good land that you're looking for or even land that's just okay, maybe a good diamond in the rough that you can improve. It's just gonna get harder and harder to find. Now, in addition to the cost of land, you also have to consider the cost of all the other supporting things that you're gonna to need to start homesteading. So for example, if you have a homestead, you're gonna have some equipment that's gonna take more fuel, you're gonna have feed for your livestock, all the different supplies for their health and for their nutrition, for managing them, and the cost of these supplies, the fuel, the feed, that also is going up over time. So the cost of gasoline, if you got a tractor, even if it's a small little tractor that you just use to you know, mow and maintain some of your pastures, or if you have a bigger tractor running on diesel, the cost of that is going to go up. Feed, we have watched a bag of feed go from around $10 to sometimes closer to $20 in the last 15 years of homesteading. The cost of feed has at times been crazy. And depending on the quality of the feed, you might find yourself really spending, we've seen a bag of feed over $20 for a bag of feed. If it's a really good quality organic feed, something that you're looking for to feed your family that you know, you, you were looking for a higher quality feed. So all the supplies, everything you're going to need is going to continue to rise in price over time. The longer that you wait to start homesteading, the more the cost is going to go up. If you should find the property and be able to get started, now you're gonna to say to yourself, all right, I want some livestock, and you go out and you find some chickens and you bring them back to your homestead only to find out that every year, more and more regulations are being put in place which are going to give you a harder and harder time with your homestead dreams. I just read a white paper on regulatory reform and it said farmers and ranchers across the country have shared stories about the impact regulations have on their lives and businesses. Additionally, agricultural facilities like grain elevators and commodity producing facilities have been subjugated to unreasonable, costly and lengthy battles over federal rules. One of the realities of life in rural America is the mission creep that increasingly brings farmers, ranchers, and regulated agricultural businesses face to face with federal regulations. Consider the following real life examples. And it went on to share a couple really sad examples of farmers just trying to do their best to grow some product and red tape and regulations getting in there and messing them up. One example was a farmer in West Virginia who was told by the EPA that dust and feathers blown to the ground from her chicken growing operation con constituted a violation of the Clean Water Act. It required tens of thousands of dollars for her to defend her farm in court, as well as intervention in the suit by the American Farm Bureau Federation. The court sided with her and rejected the EPA's allegations and the agency's interpretation of the Clean Water Act. The EPA subsequently ignored the decision and publicly stated its intent to go after more farmers for the same activity. So there's just one example of a, a farmer who's just trying to raise some chickens and just unnecessary overbearing red tape getting in the way, causing them a lot of money a lot of stress, a lot of problems. Another one, a California farmer faced enforcement action from the Army Corps of Engineers for violating the Clean Water Act. The agency alleges the farmer created many mountain ranges, get this, by plowing four to seven inches deep in a wetland. Uh, so he was just putting four to seven inch rows in, plowing rows in, and that was creating many mountain ranges. 
Now this might seem like crazy, you know, uh, rare, strange instances of overreach in the regulations and red tape, but it really does happen to homesteaders, ma and pa's. I just saw recently on YouTube a channel talking about how they had put up a really nice little farm stand. It was lovely. They were selling uh, their goat milk soaps and all different products, salves and honey, just a really nice thing. Their community really enjoyed it. And they got reported on by someone. A government official showed up and took pictures and told them because they had not put their address on their labels and a few other issues about what in particular they were selling and whether or not they were allowed to sell that product, they got shut down. They didn't put their label, they didn't label their product with their address, but they were selling from their front yard. So everybody knew the address, they were selling from their front yard. So it's little nitpicky things like that that get in the way and cause people to either say, never mind, I'm not going to homestead, I'm not gonna have these animals, or it costs them a lot of extra money and time and stress. So this is an issue and every single year, more and more red tape shows up, more and more regulations and rules. These organizations, the, the, the systems are in place, they have to do something, they get the funding every year, so more and more rules, more and more red tape, more and more eyes prying to find out what you're not supposed to do on your homestead and making sure that you don't do it. So that is only increasing as well. And we saw this again, 15 years ago, we, the very properties we wanted to choose for a homestead, the first one we couldn't use because we couldn't have chickens. And then there were issues as to where we put our pigs. If you're looking at starting a homestead, you're gonna have to make sure that the animals you want to have are allowed on that property. Make sure you can have the amount of animals. And you may find in some areas, they really pick on certain animals like pigs, for example. You may have all the regulations allowing you to do everything you want. You might be able to have chickens, horses, cows, and then you may find that your dream animal, you wanted to do a pastured pig operation. Well, there it is, right in the legalese. You're not allowed to have pigs on your property because somebody thought pigs smelled bad and got a law passed saying that, you know, unless you have a hundred acres or 500 acres, you can't have pigs. These problems, these three major problems facing you right now today, they are only increasing. They're only going to get harder. If you look over the last 100 years, you look over these trends before making this episode, we did the research, the cost goes up the red tape goes up, and the amount of support that you have to do this continues to go down. Now that is depressing, that is sad. So what do you do with this? Do you give up? Do you say, well, looks like I can't ever do this? No, we have this channel, we've been doing home study for the last 10 years to encourage you, to inspire you. So although that's a sad, scary message that it's only going to get harder, of course, we have some advice for what you should do right now if you have a homestead dream to make sure that it is a reality. What can you do? What can you do to make sure that you actually do start and grow a homestead? It's actually really, really simple. I want you to just do the littlest, teeniest, tiniest thing, starting today, the tiniest little step you can make. Make that step. Imagine, maybe you've seen on YouTube these elaborate domino setups. And one thing that you'll see a lot of times in these domino layouts, uh, you'll have dominoes of little teeny tiny size that grow and grow and grow. And you might find a little teeny tiny domino that over one, two, three, four, five, six domino steps suddenly is able to knock over a domino the size of a car or the size of a small house. That little teeny tiny domino can't knock over the big domino all by itself. But if you start with the little domino and you build and build and build and build, eventually you may find yourself taking care of those big problems, those big tasks with ease. That's the way homesteading works. 15 years ago, when I started homesteading, I had very little knowledge about this world. I had zero experience. Everything was hard. Everything was difficult. 
So what did I do? Well, I just started with one teeny tiny little step, which in the very beginning was just acquiring the knowledge I needed. I decided to get started homesteading in my journey through hunting. I wanted to get some good quality meat for my family. I didn't own any land and I didn't have any way of acquiring land at that time. I couldn't raise livestock in a third story apartment. So I figured the best way to get some good quality meat for my family without buying land was to go out and hunt. And so I knew nothing about hunting. I knew nothing about shooting, bows, arrows, rifles, shotguns, none of that. So we went to the library because again, at the time, YouTube was not the resource it is today. We went to the library and we got some books out about hunting and then I got a subscription to a hunting magazine. Then I got a bow and arrow and I taught myself through some online resources and help how to shoot a bow and arrow and I learned how to become an archery hunter. And after two years down this journey, I actually was able to get my first deer. And then with that deer on the ground, I was able to learn how to butcher, which is a skill that we have now used for all sorts of different animals. We raise and grow our own sheep. We raise and grow our own pigs. We raise and grow our own goats, cows, chickens, all these different livestock. And I've been able to, on my own homestead with just some simple basic tools, process all these animals thanks to that first little domino way, way back 15 years ago when we started learning about hunting and getting into the world of hunting. This is the power that the domino effect has. Where you are at the beginning of your journey, you probably can only knock over those little teeny tiny dominoes. But as you continue along, the bigger problems, the bigger struggles, the bigger, bigger trials that you face, you're able to handle them because as you go along in your journey, you acquire more skills, you acquire more knowledge, your circle, your sphere, your connections, your network grows more and more people who are willing to help you and teach you. Uh, you learn more from them everything will get easier as long as you start. And that's why you have to start today. That's why you have to start now, not wait. Take this homestead dream of yours and remove it from the dream space. This is not a dream that's gonna happen someday. Put it into the space of goals, actionable steps, however small. Because the sooner you start, everything is gonna get easier. Everything's gonna get better. And these three big struggles that we talk about, these three big problems that you're going to face, you're gonna be able to handle them all better as long as you start today with the help of that domino effect. So let's take a look at the first problem that we talked about, right? The support systems for homesteading, the people who can teach you, the people who can help you with veterinary work, the people who are gonna help you process uh, what whatever support people you need if you start today, you probably don't know anybody who has a farm. You probably don't have anyone who's just like waiting to teach you something. Uh, you probably don't know any vets or any butchers who are gonna help you out with the processing or the health of your herd, right? You're, you have zero. But let's say this weekend you go to the farmer's market, right? And you have this dream of starting a pastured pork operation. That was me about 12 years ago. We wanted to get pigs. I'd kind of always wanted to have pigs and I just thought, you know what, pasture pigs, that would be a perfect thing for the property we had. But I didn't know anything about pigs. I didn't have any connections. I didn't know where to get feed. I didn't know what infrastructure I needed. I was at zero and it seemed pretty impossible. So we went to the farmer's market and I found somebody who was selling pastured pork. And I just went up to them and I started asking them questions. What kind of pigs do you raise? Why? What breeds have you tried? Why do you like this breed? Where do you get them processed? Where do you buy feed from? What kind of feed? What do you have to feed your pigs? I asked a million questions. Now, if you're gonna do this, by all means, purchase something from that farmer. Don't stand at their farmer's market booth, chat their ear off for 20 minutes and walk away without buying something because that's a quick way to get on their you know bad list. <laughs> you don't wanna be on the farmer's bad list. You want them to you know, appreciate you being there and enjoy talking with you. So, you know, buy some sausage, buy some bacon. It's gonna be more expensive than what you get at the supermarket, but you're supporting them and they're gonna be one of your connections. So you ask them a bunch of questions and, you know, maybe let them know what your intentions are. Say, listen, someday I'd like to raise pastured pigs 
and I'm trying to learn as much as I can. If you ever have a day on the farm where you need a hand, you know, with your pigs or whatever, here's my number, give it to them. You might be surprised. I had a farmer one day invite me for all things. He invited me to help out with pig castration day. <laughs> That's one of my like the earliest memories in the, the pork pig operation world was helping out uh, this farmer do pig castration. It was a wild day on the farm. You had to grab all those little teeny tiny feeder pigs and hoist them up into the little, it was like a little pig vise and he was castrating them. Ching, it was an assembly line. and I learned a lot that day. And the point was in this time, you're learning new skills. You're meeting new people, your network is growing. So once it became possible for me to have pigs, I now had a source where I could buy my pigs from. I knew where I needed to get the feed from. When I called up the source where I was gonna buy my pigs, he said, have you ever raised pigs before? No, I hadn't. All right, well, come to my farm, take a tour and see how I raise them. I'm gonna show you the infrastructure you need to put in place. So I went off to Tom Dexter's farm. He was my, my earliest and biggest pig mentor. And Tom showed me what infrastructure I needed to have on my homestead so that it would be nice, smooth pig operation. Everything would go great. And he said, build it first. Don't buy pigs and then build it. Put this in first and then you can buy pigs for me. So that's what we did. We went back to the homestead and we built exactly what Tom described. So here we are now we're building a pig concrete pig pad with our fencing down into the concrete. This wasn't my idea. It wasn't some untested thing that wasn't going to work. It was someone who had been raising pigs for decades, giving me exactly what I needed to know, making sure that our pig operation started off smooth. And it did. We got two pigs. We raised them. It was so great. Everything was so well that like halfway through, we got two more pigs. So we actually wound up raising four pigs our first year. The next year, we decided to up that to six. So we raised six and we sold two of them. Figured let's make a little bit of money. That kept happening to the point where we had doubled in size. We were raising 12 pastured pigs every year and we were able to pay for all our pig feed, all the supplies, the, the feeder pigs, everything, and make a profit. So there's the domino effect, right? I went from not knowing anything, not knowing what kind of pigs I wanted, to actually earning money profiting and being able to take that money and put it into other livestock and other animals. The point is, as soon as you start, everything gets easier because of the skills you learn, the knowledge you learn, the networking that you have, the new people that you meet. That's going to help you in your, your circle of you know support. In your journey, you're going to meet people who can help you with veterinary work. You're going to meet people who can teach you that. You're going to learn how to butcher some things and get better so that you can butcher yourself. Or maybe you'll find a butcher that you can work with. The people who are going to help you on this journey, you're going to have more and more of them if you start now. If you wait 10 years to start, you're going to be behind 10 years. You're not going to have anybody to help you when it's finally time to go. So start now. And that's an easy one. What about in the world of cost, right? You're like, you know, I'd love to start, but you know, I just don't have any money. I can't put any money into a homestead. Well, the same rule applies to cost. That's why we want to start knocking those dominoes over today. You can't afford a big piece of property today. I have been in your shoes. I know what that feels like. You can't afford a piece of property. You can't even afford the livestock that you want to get right now. Yes, I understand that. So start with steps that don't require any money. If your dream is to have a maybe 10 acre farm and let's say you, the state you live in, you have a, you know, you just want to have a 10 acre farm. You don't want to move states. You live near family and you just want your 10 acre farm here and you want to raise in your mind right now, you think I want a dairy cow on 10 acres and some sheep. Okay. That's, that's your dream, but you don't have any money right now. Well, what can you do? Go learn about cows. Take some field trips, email local farms who sell dairy products and say, hey, I'd like to come and buy. They always support them financially, uh, you know, even if it's just a, a gallon of milk. I'd like to come and buy some milk from you and I have a couple questions. If you warn them ahead of time so that they're not in the middle of chores, 
it'll be better for them. Say, listen, I have a couple questions about raising a dairy cow. I'd like to get one in the future. I'm years away from it, but I, I want to learn a few things. You may find that they invite you in. Maybe they let you milk a cow. Maybe they explain how things work. Maybe they don't. Maybe they're like, sorry, I don't have time or I don't have people on my farm. Try somebody else. Look for another farm that has dairy cows or a farm that sells dairy cows. Eventually, you'll find someone who's willing to share that with you and explain things. Uh, when we were in our family cow journey, we went on a field trip to a family cow farm and we got to actually learn how to milk a family cow. And then they invited us to what was called a family cow forum. So this was a, an event we got to go to, it was free. And there were five or six different people sitting there and they all shared a presentation on keeping a family cow and they had snacks, homemade cheese. And we learned so much and our network in cows grew. We learned more about where did you get your cows from and what kind of cows do you have and what do you like? and more and more connections, more and more people, you won't believe what opportunities start popping up if you've started knocking these dominoes down. So maybe you can't afford a cow, but you're very passionate about cows and you've learned a lot and maybe you volunteer on a couple farms and you, you find out, okay, you know, you get some hands-on experience. We were offered at one point in time a free family milk cow. Somebody was selling their family milk cow and they just wanted it to go to a good home and they knew we knew a lot about livestock. We had never owned cows before, but they knew we had a lot of livestock experience and they knew we knew what we were talking about, right? When it came to cows, we'd done our research and they were selling this cow and we said, listen, it's, you know, it's not gonna work for us right now. And they said, we'll give you this milk cow because we know you're gonna take care of it and we want it to go to a good home. So just by knocking down those early dominoes, getting the knowledge, learning about the animal, getting into the network of people in our area who worked with family milk cows and dairy cows, eventually we had this opportunity where with no money, we could have owned our first dairy cow. So if you start knocking those dominoes down now, you might find out later on in your journey, you have access to less expensive animals, uh, special opportunities that other people don't get. And this isn't just with livestock. You may find that there's a piece of property that, uh, and this, we'll tell more about this throughout the series and uh, more examples of this. We have a whole episode coming out just about how to get access to free land. Uh, but you may not be able to afford land right now. You might not be able to be approved for a mortgage, but it, as you knock these dominoes down, and meet more people. I'm speaking from experience here. You may have people who come to you and tell you, hey, I've got this piece of property. I think it's what you need. I think it's what you're interested in. And I'd like to see it turned into a homestead. I'd like to see it worked. So why don't we work together? Why don't we make this happen? Where you will find out you don't need a bank anymore. You don't need a mortgage. You don't need to have $200,000 sitting there ready to buy the property you can work out some kind of deal, but that only happens as you grow your network and people know what you're doing. And that's from knocking over those early dominoes and getting more and more involved in this space. That's why you can't wait because that takes a long time to do. Growing your network like that, getting, letting people know your intentions, what you're trying to do, showing them that you're a hard worker, that you're learning and you're willing to do what it takes you may find opportunities coming your way that would never have come your way had you not stock started with the little teeny tiny dominoes in the beginning. This can also help you with regulations and red tape, that other big issue that we're all facing. You see, you may have heard the term grandfathered. <laughs> that building has been grandfathered in or, or that pig farm is grandfathered. If you start a pig operation, in your town and then five years later they make it illegal to raise pastured pigs you already have one chances are you're going to be able to be grandfathered in if you build a building before the zoning laws come along and say you can't build a building this place on your property or this size you can be grandfathered in so the sooner you start in this journey the better off you're going to be with red tape the better off you're going to be with regulations this also applies when you run into trouble Let's say you have an operation and you've been selling pastured chicken to your neighbors. You're the person they go to for their farm fresh chicken. You have 10 customers. Well, that's 10 people who really care about your farm and want to see it continue. So if suddenly your town is considering making 
raising chickens in your backyard illegal? If they're gonna, you know, there's a zoning meeting and somebody is sick of hearing roosters and they're like, I want chickens in this town outlawed unless you own 10 acres. Well, now you can let the people know that are your customers, hey, our town is thinking about making chickens illegal and guess what? That means I can't sell your chicken. You now have 10 people who care about you and your ability to continue raising chicken that you won't have if you hadn't started already and gotten to that point. So when it comes to regulations and red tape, it also the domino effect can be very powerful. The sooner you start, the quicker you grow, and the more people who you've met and who care about your homestead, the more power you're gonna to have to work through the red tape, cut through the red tape, and avoid that excess regulation that's gonna hold other people back who waited to start, who waited on that dream for five years or for 10 years. So this is the point. No matter what problems you're gonna face in your journey going forward, starting a homestead, there's gonna be all kinds of problems. The big three we talked about today, there's gonna to be other ones. You're gonna face other issues. Maybe it's health problems. Maybe it's family issues. Uh, whatever it is, you're going to face them. But remember those little teeny tiny dominoes and those big giant ones at the end of the line. Those big dominoes, you can't knock down with the teeny dominoes. you got to work your way there. So the point is you got to get started. you got to look this weekend and say, okay, this weekend coming, how can I take another step? And that can be the babiest little step. For me, in the very beginning, it was going to the library and getting some books and then talking with people who had some experience, that's what you can do. You're watching this video, you can learn more on YouTube, but this weekend coming up, take a tangible action. Go to a farmer's market, find somebody who is doing what you wanna do, buy something from them and pick their brain a little bit. Make it a goal to get invited to see somebody's operation. So if you wanna raise goats, go to five different goat milk stands, buy five different goat milk, cheeses and try to make it your goal without being too pushy just to let the people know your intentions i'd like to get some goats one day i don't know anything about it i'd love to learn more ask them do you offer any classes do you any do you do any farm tours and if they're like no 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 say well you know what i i'm a hard worker and i'd love to volunteer if you ever need a hand trimming goat hooves if you ever need a hand moving goats through your field uh, if you ever need a hand with anything on your homestead, here's my number. I'd love to come and help. And you know what? I just want to learn so you don't have to worry about paying me. They'll probably send you home with some goat cheese or some goat milk. So, you know, farmers know how valuable some good hard work is. And maybe they don't have a lot of extra money to pay you, but they'll probably have something in the, the freezer or the refrigerator that they'll send you home with. That's how we always sent volunteers at our homestead home. They always went home with some chicken for dinner or some pastured pork, some bacon. Uh, so you'll probably get something, but you're definitely gonna get ex experience. You're gonna grow your network and you're gonna be getting better and better, bigger and bigger. You're gonna be able to tackle those bigger, harder dominoes at the end of the line if you get started. So don't wait, get the dominoes knocking down, keep them going, don't stop. That's how you can handle these big problems. Your path might be different. Maybe you want to start gardening or growing trees. Maybe you want to work with a family milk cow. Whatever it is, you need to kind of zoom way, way back and say, what is the best way I can start? What's the first teeniest, tiniest thing I can do? And the good news is today you've already done one little teeny tiny step. You've watched this video, which is the first video of a series we're going to be talking about starting homesteading and growing your homestead over time. So the first little domino, you've already knocked that one over. What do you do next? Well, next, when the video is ready, watch the next video in our series, which, which, is, which is going to talk about the biggest challenge people face in starting their homestead dream. We actually asked the homesteady audience, thousands, 2,000 people answered this poll. We said, what's the number one reason that you have not started homesteading? We asked, was it money? Was it land? Was it a lack of knowledge? Or was it some situation in your life? So take a minute, you yourself, and think and maybe comment on this video. Why have you not actually started if you have this homestead dream? Is it money? Is it not having access to the land? Is it a lack of knowledge? Or is it something personal in your life? Maybe health issues. Maybe you want a homestead, but your partner doesn't. 
Whatever it is, take a moment, think about that. Out of 2,000 people who answered our poll, we found that the majority, almost 50% of people said the reason they had not yet started homesteading was because they didn't have enough money. That can be a huge challenge because whether it's livestock or planting some plants in a garden, just managing some pastures, whatever you want to do, homesteading will require money. So how can you get started homesteading if you don't have any money to spare? We're going to talk about that in the next video in this series. Make sure you don't miss that video. Click here to sign up to our email list. We're going to email out this series. When the next video in the series is ready, we will let you know so you can dive in and see how you can get started homesteading, even if you don't have any extra money, which more and more days feels like all of us are in that same position.